Hello everyone, and welcome back to DMG. When I bring up hard drives from the late 90s through the early 2000s, the first thing you think of may very well be IDE. And that is true, the consumer standard for hard drives in that time period was IDE, right here. 44 pin plus Molex, can't go wrong. But, as always, the professionals demand more. And that is why today's drive exists. This is a 68-pin Ultra 320 SCSI drive. The one I have right here happens to be an IBM Ultrastar from 2000, before Hitachi bought out IBM's hard drive division and the Ultrastar, DeskStar, Travelstar, etc. star line. Now, SCSI is something I've never really dabbled into until right about now, because a lot of people have told me, SCSI sucks, don't get into it. But if anything, that's made me want to try SCSI even more. Yes, I'm fun at parties, shut up. But this here SCSI drive is not your average IDE drive, this is a high-end workstation slash data center slash server grade drive. Now there are two subclasses of drives in that category that I'm going to cover very quickly. One is drives that are really slow but can hold a lot. That encompasses things like tape drives and optical storage to name a few. These are usually used for archival storage because it's data that needs to be retained in a huge quantity, but it doesn't need to be accessed frequently or rapidly. Then on the complete opposite side of the spectrum, you get a drive like this. Capacity doesn't matter nearly as much as speed. This is a 10,000 RPM drive. Yes, it's 24 years old and it spins at 10,000 RPM, but it's only nine gigabytes. My IDE drive for comparison, this is a Barracuda ATA4 with a date code of 2001. It's 40 gigabytes, and if I recall correctly, these were available in up to 80 gigabytes, and that was pretty much the standard of the time for a consumer grade PC hard drive. Before I can even plug this drive in, there are a few things I need to talk about with SCSI, so let's get right into that. As people have been warning me, now owning a SCSI drive and a controller card, or HBA as I will maybe sometimes possibly call it, yes, SCSI does indeed suck. There are a lot of things called SCSI. Now it's true also for IDE, there are a lot of different revisions with IDE, but the difference between IDE revisions and SCSI revisions is that IDE drives all use the same connector. There are different connectors for laptop and desktop drives, but those are really obvious. 40 and 44 pin. Beyond that, the revisions of IDE drives are mainly updates on speed and improvements such as cable select, which will automatically configure your drives without the need for those pesky master-slave jumpers. I'll get into jumpers a little bit later, but let me rant about SCSI for a bit. There are so many goddamn connectors called SCSI. Now, I figured it out eventually, but it was a good hour of research. SCSI is both internal and external. Some SCSI cables carry power, some don't. Some are intercompatible with other cables, some aren't. Some SCSI ports don't even have their own cables, such as 80 pin, which you either need a 24-year-old server or an adapter card to even use. You can't just buy an 80 pin cable because it also carries power, which an SAS card, sorry, a SCSI card does not provide by default. Because I accidentally said SAS, let me mention that really quickly. SAS is literally SCSI. It's the SCSI protocol. It's in the name, Serial Attached SCSI, aka SCSI over a SATA connector, aka SCSI 
without this BS that I'm going to get into. I finally settled for this as my first SCSI drive. I'm probably going to buy more in the future if everything is smooth sailing with this drive. It seemed the easiest to get into. This is, that's the wrong end, this is Ultra 320, 68 pins, plus 4 pin Molex power. It has a jumper block here for configuration of something, and then here's the main important configuration back here. Now these are a feature on all SCSI drives. This lets you set which device ID you are using. Now it needs that many pins versus just simple master and slave on a plebeian IDE drive. Because this IDE, because IDE supports up to two devices per channel, SCSI supports eight. You can have eight drives on the same channel. Now, if you add multiple devices on the same channel, then you also have to do extra stuff, such as terminating the chain. So yeah, it's really finicky, but I kind of like when hardware requires some effort. Now, let me bring up something really quickly. I love this, like the actual design of the drive. There's a cutout for an electrolytic capacitor right here. Like, they took the time to make a cutout in the case so they could put that capacitor there. Also, I don't have my Ultra Stars with me right now. They are in my room. But this 24-year-old Ultra Star bears a striking resemblance to newer ones. Not WD Ultra Stars, I mean Hitachi Ultra Stars. I recently made a video on pretty much every HGST chassis ever. And if you go back and watch this, you'll notice some similarities. Filter hole in the same place as early Ultra Star drives. And it has this, like, scoop pattern in the bottom, just like early Ultra Star drives on the SATA bus. But anyway, that is enough about the drive itself. Let's go pop it in our Windows XP system, where I have a SCSI card waiting. I'm going to be benchmarking it against this Barracuda ATA4, because this was a common you know, home PC drive model at the time. This is just 7200 RPM. It has two platters, and let me look in the IBM drives manual really quickly, but it has a stupid amount of uh, platters. It has so many platters. I think it's like five. Now the manual also says that this drive can be used for movie editing, and if that doesn't sound really awesome, then I don't know what does, so uh, be prepared for a really, really cool drive. I've got our SCSI card installed. It's down here. We can see our big port. This card is an Adaptech 2940. It seems like a pretty good SCSI card to buy for someone who's never really done SCSI before. And if I can get my, uh, my slots open, here we go. Let me just show you this card really quickly. So we have one 68 pin port, we have a 50 pin port, and then we also have an external port. So it's a good card for a beginner to SCSI because it has just pretty much every SCSI port I could want. Now I've already plugged this in, booted up the computer with it, and the card recognized in XP without even needing to install drivers, which was pretty nice. So hopefully it'll just work once I plug this drive in because my cables arrive tomorrow. And by the way, the SCSI drive is the one up here. The one with the ATA cable is the Barracuda that I'm going to be benchmarking it against. Okay, so I got my SCSI cables. I think everything is hooked up correctly. I put the drive on the final device in the chain and terminated it afterwards, set it to uh, ID zero. So hopefully everything is gonna work fine. But uh, well, here we go. Ooh, oh, I hear it. Oh, that's glorious. Oh, there it goes.
That is the most drawn out start up or spin up I have ever heard. That is glorious. Okay, so now we're into our uh, SCSI cards BIOS. Let's see if it finds it. There we go, that's in focus now. Ooh, there we go. There's our uh, IBM drive. Let's power it off to hear the spin down. And it takes ages to spin down from uh, 10,000 RPM. That is crazy. So uh, already I like this drive just from the sound, but that's not enough to determine uh, whether or not it's actually faster than this Barracuda ATA4. So let's run some benchmarks. I've finished testing the SCSI drive, and the first thing I want to say is it sounds heavenly. It has the best startup, spin down, and just overall usage sounds imaginable. And I'm going to play probably like 30 seconds of hard drive sounds right now. Alright, that was glorious, wasn't it? So I've got the lineup here. Left, IBM Drive. Middle, Seagate uh, Barracuda ATA4. Pretty common PC IDE hard drive from early 2000s. And then a SATA Barracuda Drive. I believe from the 7200.9 series. Uh, but if I'm wrong, it's just like one click to look up that model number. But anyway, uh, we've got our basic Crystal Disk Mark tests, but I've also tested it with HD Tune Pro, which gives us a lot more data. Now we can see that, um, well, first of all, I just benchmarked this drive, uh, the SATA 2 drive. I didn't expect this drive to get anywhere close to it, but it actually did. It had sequentials that were a lot lower than I had expected, but it's random and seek performance is exactly what I was hoping from a 10k drive because that is usually what benefits the most from a higher spindle speed. We can see it gets half the speed of the Barracuda drive uh, but it does beat it in random and our access time is a solid like three milliseconds lower. It's even faster than the SATA drive uh, so that's a uh, pretty cool thing. Let's move on to our second test. Okay, so these are our random and, uh, well, yeah, our random access tests with different sizes of data. So we can see it actually beats in the 512 bytes through, I believe, 64K. It beats, yeah, it beats both of the Barracuda drives. And let me remind you, this is a drive from like 2008, and it gets beaten by this 2001 10K drive in random. But that is going to wrap it up for this video. Thank you everyone for watching. Uh, please let me know if you want me to buy more SCSI hardware, because this really does fascinate me. Uh, pretty interesting results from that drive. I want to see what I can do with some other drives, because there's some really cool drives on the SCSI bus. But, uh, as always, tons of other hard drive content on the channel, so if you enjoy hard drives as much as I do, you're gonna enjoy those videos as much as I love making them. But that's it for this one. Thank you for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed, and see you next time.